What's going on guys, it's Arrow, and today I played Armageddon brand of volatility, so you don't have to. So the TLDR of this build is it has phenomenal clear, it's fairly tanky, and has very little single target damage for the investment. It was a lot of fun to frost plank around and clear multiple screens at once, but the truth is it's not a very good build. And there's a good reason why. My chat made me play this build. I'm in the middle of a subathon. We are about to be on day 19. And one of the sub goals was that chat got to pick an ascendancy and a skill. The skill they chose was Armageddon Brand of Volatility, and I could not trigger it. I had to self cast it. The truth is, Armageddon Brand of Volatility is not a very good skill. It has a cast time, and then it has an arming time, and then it has a meteor falling to the ground time before it gets its damage out. If you play it as Ignite, which you kind of have to, you then have the delay of Ignite time. I found myself just frost blinking around the maps and doing most of my damage that way. The skill does not do nearly enough damage for how clunky it is, and I really don't recommend that you play this as a self-cast build. But there's some cool stuff in this. I want to show off some of the ways that we made this Elementalist into a fairly tanky build, and maybe you can adopt some of this tech for your own build. So we'll keep this short. Let's jump in. Okay, here we have level 94 Arrow Geddon brand. <laughs> level 94 is not great. It's uh, usually a sign that I did not have very much fun with the build if I stop it by the time I've gotten to level 94. Main theory behind this build is that we wanna convert our fire and our cold damage taken to lightning and then convert our physical damage to lightning as well with the lightning coil. We're then going to also convert half of our LE to chaos and get just lightning and chaos resistance. If you look in the character sheet, we have 90 max lightning and 87 max chaos. The plan was to get one more born of chaos uh, cluster over here if we got two more levels, and then we would have 90 max chaos and 90 max lightning, but we never quite got there because I was just kind of sick of playing the build. This requires a font of thunder to give you 40% of each taken as lightning, a divine flesh, which gives you 50% of Ellie taken as chaos, which includes fire, cold, and lightning. So you're at 90% of each between these two. And then you go and you get a watcher's eye that has 10% of fire and cold taken as lightning while affected by purity of lightning. This synergizes because purity of lightning is already going to give you max lightning res and you want to get up to 90. One of the crucial things here is that you have to divine this for 10%. If you have more than that, you will take extra damage. If you have, say, 105% of fire taken as lightning, you're going to take 5% more damage. And obviously you do not want that. So we use things like Born of Chaos and Cult of Chaos here from the Glorious Vanity Jewel to get our Chaos Res up to max. And like I said, at 96, we would have uh, we would have 90 max Chaos as well, as well. And that frees up your Fire and Cold Res, which means you don't have to invest in them at all, and it's quite nice. We have 57% of physical taken as another element, so either Chaos or Lightning, which ends up being a pretty significant portion. The nice thing about taking physical as elemental is you get to use Bastion of Elements as a defense against physical damage as well. Bastion of Elements gives us uh, 2475 of a shield, so it's like a extra pow powerful steel skin that refreshes itself quickly and gives you a very nice defensive layer. So after that, we get a little bit of block, we get a healthy chunk of evasion to get us up to 86 here, and the build really does feel tanky. I played this first with the Tides of Time. It's very similar. You just have to get like three more Max Lightning or two more Max Lightning from another source, which is readily available on Jewel. So if you, for some reason you wanted to play a setup like this, you would just swap your Tides of Time in and, and keep the same flash setup. Some other cool tech here is we are using the a Battle Mage Claw with Explode in order to get a bunch of extra damage on our Armageddon brand. So Battle Mage is a runecraft that you can get this league exclusively. And we crafted that onto a claw that had a synth explode base. A little bit more explode on top of the explode from Orient's End. All of this can ignite due to Shaper of Flames. So we have about 45% chance to explode as well as ignite proliferation in our six link. Shout out to If and Jeff, who's done a ton of testing on Ignite Prolif and all the different ways that you can get your ignites to spread, prolif, whatever the words you want to use. And he believes that this is probably the best setup is getting spread through Ignite Prolif and then getting somewhere around 40 to 50% explode. This easily chains between screens and especially in tight, densely packed maps, you can have really, really nice clear. So I'm going to jump in quick and talk about why I actually dislike the Armageddon brand of volatility skill. 
So number one, without range, your brands don't leap. As you can see, it didn't even leap from here and I have investment into brand range. Now, if you cast it closer to the enemy, you can see you cast, it connects, and then the, the thing comes down, the meteor, which is your source of damage. The brand doesn't do damage itself. It has to connect, and then you see the meteor drop. The problem with this is there's so much delay while you're mapping that if you're a fast character, things are dying way behind you, like potentially off screen behind you. And it the play style is not particularly fun. And what I ended up doing was just for linking a frost blink and just playing maps like this because it would still clear the entire screen which means why not just six link my frost blink and play that instead i have four points of investment into brand attachment range we have 30 percent here and 40 percent from the mastery and it still won't leap this far so you basically have to cast it right on top of enemies anyway and it just ultimately led to me playing a frost blink build where i would only cast this on bosses and then I would just cast it over and over again and try to get a little bit of extra hit damage out of it. And it didn't feel great. So essentially the TLDR for the build is that this is a really good shell to put an ignite skill in. And I don't recommend Armageddon brand of volatility for that shell. I think we'll just wrap it up there. I have to get back and get ready to stream because we are on subathon day 19. If you want to stop by and support me, it's twitch.tv slash AER0 underscore underscore. I will be live every single day. If you want to support me here on Twitch, you can like, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you all for watching. And as always, take care.